Hi guys, I'm John and you're watching Birds of Cebu, a channel dedicated to aviculture, avian behaviorism, and avian companionship. So today I'm going to be showing you a clip from a favorite show of mine back in Jurong Bird Park, which is called the High Flyer Show. Now what they do is they're actually going to present some parrots that are going to free fly upon command and do a couple of aerial tricks and also some uh, other talents like talking or even <laughs> picking up things. And because the audio is not very clear, because I was recording it with an older phone, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some commentary along the way so you can understand what's going on in the show. So let's watch the clip. So we're going to start the high fly show right now. And you can see there are some birds flying around. And at the ground, we'll see some scarlet abyss. They can actually fly, but I think here they're just making them walk. Now, it's actually true that macaws are the favorite choice of birds for free flying because they're easy to train and they're wonderful flyers. And they actually enjoy flying. Scarlet macaw, my favorite. Such a beautiful bird and I love seeing the colors reflect in the sun. If you can see, I'm actually situated in the far corner of the amphitheater because I wanted to show you guys the full extent of their flying. So she's saying we're here at the Pools Amphitheater for the High Flyer Show at Jerome Bird Park. And this is the second time I'm watching this because the first time I got to see the show was actually back when I first uh, visited Jurong Bird Park. But that time I wasn't able to capture the entire show. She's going to recall a chicken. I think it's a bantam chicken. Interesting thing about chicken is that they're not actually flightless birds, unlike true flightless birds like penguins or ostriches. So you can see the other trainer, she's trying to recall the chicken to her. And the chicken's body language says, hmm, I'm curious, but... Okay, now you can see the chicken's backing off. She's just gonna grab him. <laughs> so she's having the macaws fly down. The hyacinth macaw. And a scarlet macaw flying down. Look at that glide. Perfect control, perfect landing. So the hyacinth macaw is actually the largest of the macaw species. Also the most expensive commercially. Now they're bringing out another scarlet macaw, probably to do some tricks. And the thing with the, mus the birds that you can't have one bird do all the tricks. It's not because they can't, it's more of because birds easily get bored. And just to make sure that the bird is still motivated, driven, they will shift between birds for different tricks. So what he's doing is they're demonstrating how the bird is teaching us about keeping our trash. Takes the cup and gives it to someone who disposes the trash properly. This is rather common in bird shows to use a bird to demonstrate proper 
activities and environmental aspects. So keeping your trash, recycling. In this case, he sees a straw, plastic straw, says, nope, I'm throwing it away. As much as I like teaching about the environment through birds, but I've seen it too many times. At one point, it gets boring. But it's still very adorable to see them, you know, touch things and manipulate them with their hands. Yeah, so a quick reminder that plastic is really a huge problem in our oceans today and I guess to those viewers here right now, if you can have a lifestyle change that does not involve having a lot of plastic in it, that including friends, I suggest you make that choice. Try to say more no to less uh, no to plastic. Try to have less plastic in your life. So they're now showing tote bags. Because you don't want to keep using plastic bags. Very basic message and because the audience is really, a lot of them are kids, they try to keep the message simple in these educational aspects of the show. Yeah, so they're telling the people, please sit down. And you know, there are a lot of hard-headed people. So what they're trying to do here is they probably have a low-flying bird come out. Somebody must be stationed out there, ready to receive the bird as a perch. Yep, there, there's a kid there with a blue shirt. And you have a Toko Tokan, oh, beautiful bird. One of my dream birds, but not exactly the best companion bird. They can get aggressive. It's difficult to read their body language. And they have very specific dietary needs, but really beautiful birds. They're not endangered species. From what I know, they're quite common from where they're from. South America, I believe. And they're amazing flyers, but if you look how they fly, they don't take to the sky immediately and glide down. Rather, they swoop down and build altitude on the last part where they land. So they're going to show here how toucans are actually very skilled flyers. They can catch things mid-air. Awesome flyer. But after taking flight, it's just going to head back down, which I think is a very efficient uh, routine so that they don't get worried about the bird flying on top of a, an audience member and scaring someone. So this is a very heavily practiced routine for them. After catching the tree, fly back to the stage. Interesting thing about toucans, they're not vegetarians, they're omnivores. They actually eat meat, so they eat small reptiles and mammals. And as much as that they're not the best companion birds, but if you know how to handle them or manage their behavior, they're quite the character. So far so good, we're not seeing any uh, mishaps in their flights. Not that I'm expecting there to be, but um, the thing with flight is that they can have accidents, but not. it's just not very common, especially if they're trained properly. So here we have an Amazon parrot. I'm not sure exactly what it is because uh, I, ha I can't I can't remember if it was a yellow crown or a yellow nape Amazon. Amazons are amazing talkers. They can repeat words and tones 
down to the specific tune. So you can see that he's not just repeating words, he's actually responding to verbal cues. they wheeled in a sulfur crested cockatoo and if I remember this right so it's a very old cockatoo 50 years old I think yeah so look at the body language that bird is not in the mood to follow cues now it's just screaming so this is what I'm talking about with bird training. At the end of the day, you can't force a bird to do something it does not want to do. If it's not in the mood to follow instructions, it's going to get wild. So you really have to understand a bird's body language, figure out how they're feeling because if they're not up for it, no matter what you try to do, they're just not going to respond to your cue. So they're probably going to wheel him out. But take a look at this one. She's going to try one more time. <laughs> yeah, so at the end of the day, you can't force them. But when they are in the mood to do a particular trick, they will do it. Telling him to speak in Chinese 1 to 10 because there's a Chinese audience in Singapore. I think it's a Chinese song that he's gonna sing. Next song is a Malay song. <laughs> so what's impressive about this is not just that it can repeat words and repeat songs, but it's not just short phrases. It's actually entire chorus lines that it's singing. So. That's what's amazing about Amazon parrots. I'm not sure if African greys have that ability as well as Amazons have, but I know other parrots can repeat words, short phrases, but not entire chorus lines. So now she's calling out people who has birthdays because as per usual, they're gonna have the birds saying happy birthday. Quite clever, really. So 
So, for people wondering, do all parrots talk? No, not all parrot species talk, but most do, and even those that can, it will still depend on the parrot and the mood and the relationship with the owner before they talk. So, if you're, ch if you're choosing a parrot based on their speaking ability, Amazons, African Greys, and Indian Reina parakeets, they're wonderful talkers. Such a behaved bird. Steps up very well. So I think the next bird they're gonna bring out is the Great Hornbill. Yep. It's a massive bird that hornbill. I mean even if you compare it with the macaws, you can see just how huge it is. So I think what they're gonna do is they're going to show how a hornbill identifies a nest, their possible breeding behavior. They're gonna simulate it. It's not going to be exactly that, but they're going to simulate it. So she's heading off to the center. I think it's for the people to get a closer look at the bird. It's always surreal to see such a massive prehistoric looking bird in front of you. Never gets old whenever I see a hornbill up close. Alright. So this one is probably the female. And they're gonna simulate the female inspecting the nest before entering it. They, the hornbills nest in these massive trees way way up and they go through the hole and what happens is the female steals up that ho the female gets get sealed up in that hole and the only way it can survive during the whole breeding process is for the male to bring her food until the chicks are ready to get out. So you can see that it's now sealed up. A prosthetic beaks there. The male is going to fly by and simulate it feeding the female. But what's really happening there, if you can see how the male is moving, is it's picking up food from the prosthetic beak. And off it goes. That black and white contrast looks beautiful. So that's that is something that they're emphasizing in the show that it's dangerous for the female if the male gets poached because she can die inside from starvation if the male doesn't come back to feed her. Poaching happens for hornbills because a lot of people want to get the horn beak. Oops, he, miss, he misses the landing. He's gonna try one more time. Yeah, that's ch that's the challenge with larger birds. It's I, I find that it's something that they struggle with landing because they're huge birds and they have to deal with the air passing through their w wings. Now this is my favorite part of the show. It involves some acrobatic flying. They're gonna be flying through the hoops and I don't know if it's difficult to teach this. What I do know is that you can't teach a beginner bird to ace the skill. This involves knowing how to navigate through the air effectively, efficiently, knowing when to control their attitude at the right moment so they can pass through the hoop pausing at the right moment so that they don't crash on the hoop. So what I want you guys to watch out for is how the birds control their flight midair. Because beginner birds, what they only know is taking off, flapping their wings and landing. More advanced birds in flying, 
you can see them work their way through the sky, work their way through the air, a quick opening or closing of their wings or gliding, resisting the air. Have a look at this one. And the blue and gold macaw. Perfect swoop blue. Scarlet macaw. Nice, see? You can see that if she's just a little bit higher than the hoop, she makes a quick dip just to get through the hoop. Very, very skilled. I wish my Iggy can do that someday. Who knows, with a lot of training, he's gonna get better with his flying. So she's saying that they're going to fly from two different points of the stage. And I think the blue and gold macaw, which is not as experienced as Scarlet Macaw, will have a first go so that he can familiarize with the new um, direction of flight. Very clean. That's a great flyer. Now what they're gonna do next is they're both going to fly at the same time and one of them is gonna take a pause mid-air for the other to pass through before going through the hoop. And I think it's a Scarlet Macaw because she's a more experienced flyer. So take a look at where they're flying and how they're moving. Look at a Scarlet Macaw. She makes a pause and takes a dive. Amazing flyer. She really is very skilled. So they're gonna make, I think, the Scarlet Macaw fly one more time. And they're gonna do a smaller hoop. Now, this one is more challenging than just flying through the hoop because it involves knowing to tuck in your wings going through the hoop so that it doesn't bump when you're flying through I know raptors are good at doing this finches are good at doing this but parrots they have a different flight pattern so this requires a very specific skill so what you want to look at is at the middle hoop it's a smaller one and look at how she controls her flight adjusting herself just before going through it beautiful you see you can see how perfectly controlled that flight was and she's off so I think in this part of the show what she's going to be doing is making each of the macaws compete against each other going to be doing is like sort of a bird basketball there's an artificial trunk in the middle of the table they got four objects I think balls that they need to push into the holes on their side the cheering really doesn't help them at all 
their the back of their heads is like, oh, I'm just gonna finish this trick to get my reward. But yeah, you want the audience excited about this activity. And Barry wins. So they're gonna have another round of this, but what they're probably gonna do is let the other bird win. Now watching this video makes me think maybe I should teach Iggy how to do basketball. I mean, I've only taught him free flight skills for now, but it would be nice to try something different. Yeah, you can see that the blue and gold McCall was just given a head start. Definitely meant for that bird to win. Never get old. I still enjoy watching this. Yeah. So she's telling them that if you want to watch again and come back again tomorrow, where they're gonna have the bird show again. Off they go. And let's see what's next. I think this is uh, moving towards the last part of the show, so they're gonna be summoning more birds to the stage just before the photo shoot. So I think what she's doing is she's now putting treats on the plates with the perch post, so that's where the birds are gonna be landing. Let's see who's gonna be flying in first. Have the pelicans entering the stage. They're actually amazing flyers. They can travel great distances, although taking off is not as easy as, let's say, for parrots. They need to build some acceleration and velocity before they can take off. Then you have these amazing flamingos. Now, this clip they don't show the, the flamingos going around in a circle like the march of flamingos but i have a clip from the first time i saw this show which i will attach towards the end so that you can see the march of the flamingos and now they're going to be calling all the macaws down i love scarlet macaws just look at the color just look at that color now, before this show comes to an end, which it already is, uh, I'd like to ask you guys to please like and subscribe to Birds of Cebu because I am going to be posting more videos of Jurong Bird Park. So far, my favorite bird park. Maybe until I find another one that I might like more, but for now, it currently is my favorite bird park. And I hope you guys like this video and future Jurong Bird Park videos because I think, uh, yeah, Jurong Bird Park is actually moving to a new location and this just might be your only chance to see Jurong Bird Park if you haven't been there before. So thank you guys for watching this clip. Now let's move on to the March of the Flamingos.